The Legend of Zelda is a game which needs no introduction. It's simply one of the most influential games I can think of. I know you know what this game is about, but I'll go over it quickly for context's sake. In 1986, Nintendo released the action-adventure fantasy game to much praise. They even predicted the praise they would get, and they put the thing out on a solid gold cartridge. Alright, so it wasn't made of real gold, but it might as well have been, because the kid version of me coveted this cartridge. The game itself has a flip screen overhead view. I had to look up flip screen, by the way. It means that the screen holds one portion of the map per screen. So when you move off screen, it flips to the next screen on the map. Well, anyway, you are the elven boy known as Link on a mission to collect the eight pieces of the broken Triforce and rescue Princess Zelda from the pig-faced Prince of Darkness known as Ganon. You begin your quest by entering a cave and retrieving the sword from this old man. Just don't hit him with it or he gets pissed. Anyway, the world of Legend of Zelda is a fantastic experience I highly recommend to anyone who wants to get into gaming on the NES or missed out on it on the first time around. But this leads to a strange problem. What other NES games are like The Legend of Zelda? This seemed like a worthwhile pursuit. So I committed to doing some treasure hunting and found 10 of the greatest NES games like The Legend of Zelda. And yes, as I found each one, I held them over my head just like Link does with every single item he finds. The following order of the games is nothing other than done by the release date. Zelda kicked it off in 1986, but then in 1987, a game was released on the Famicom called Love Warrior Nickel. I came across this in my quest to find a Zelda-like game. I'm not sure if it was suggested due to the flip screen overhead view. See, that definition's paying off to know already. But this could be seen as Zelda in the future. Honestly, the game reminds me more of the overhead segments of Blaster Master than Zelda. And I mean, look at these enemies. You've got Monchi Cheese and Johnny Fives on the same screen. I haven't really played a ton of this one yet, but it seems like there's a lot of world to explore, and it's actually kind of fun. It's worth a shot at least. Up next, Willow by Capcom. Now they say movie tie-ins are crap, and that's usually a good rule of thumb, but there are always exceptions and this would be one. I must say that the footage you see here is the first time I've played this since I was a kid. However, based on the memories that have come flooding back alone, I know this is a pretty good pick. Even back when the Willow game was released, I knew it was a refined version of Zelda. I mean, it even has you playing this Orc Arena to warp. Not to say it's a total ripoff or a better game, it's really its own game with that Zelda flavor. And the movie ain't half bad either. 1989 brought us Arkista's Ring by American Sammy. Must be some kind of pirate game, I guess, where you go around kissing rings. Arr, kiss the ring. Look, I'm not even sorry about that awful joke. This is a gaming channel. I can be a dork sometimes. It's cool to be who you are. Anyway, this one might be stretching it a little as a Zelda-like game, and mainly that's due to it being so linear. Sure, the similarities are there. It's in a fantasy setting with an overhead view where you shoot arrows while collecting potions and other power-ups. My biggest gripe is the way you move, as if you're attached to a grid on a field. You take a step forward, and you are committing to that step. You want to turn around on a dime? Too bad. You have to turn around and walk ahead of space and then try to shoot down the dog, or whatever the fuck that is. Anyway, let's move on. Crystallis is a game I should have tried long ago. It was one I missed out on in the heyday of Nintendo, but playing it today, I know I would have dug the shit out of this with a shovel. Out of all the games we're discussing in this video, this is the one I want to make sure I go back to and explore thoroughly. Your characters move much faster than Link does, which makes the action feel way more intense. Add the fact that the collision detection kind of blows, and I guess it kind of balances things out. Or it might just frustrate you into playing something else. But really, the graphics, the music, and the story should keep you coming back for more. I know it does for me. Next up is Star Tropics. I've heard tales that this game was designed to be a Western version of The Legend of Zelda. If true, I can totally see it. So this was a game my next door neighbor had, and we played it all the time as kids. He was super into it, and I would just come over and watch him play. That's pretty much how I experienced it the first time around. A few years ago, I picked up this cartridge and decided to take the journey on a live stream. Man, that was a good time. The story of this game had me really wrapped up in it, and it only gets more and more intense as it progresses. 
Not to mention, the difficulty also starts to ramp up. It's never so hard you want to toss your controller through the TV, but it's hard enough to make you want to get through the challenge and keep trying. My main gripe starting out was your characters on that grid system I mentioned earlier. But the difference is, it's a little more flexible than Arkista's ring. And after you get used to it, you can use the grid in a strategic way. Look, there's a good reason Nintendo puts this one out on their Switch NES collection as well as the NES Classic Console. No jokes, just worth a playthrough. So here we have Grandmaster, released in 1991 by Very. Very what? I don't know, let's find out. This is actually a fan translation of a Famicom game of the same name. I'm sure if you want this one on an NES cartridge, you can find a reproduction somewhere, or just emulate it. I'm playing the ROM using an EverDrive here. The game itself is more linear than Zelda, but instead of an open world, you have a stage select, like something you'd find in Mega Man. Pick one of the stages and off you go. Have you ever seen such a huge, long sword in a video game? My god, the shaft on that thing must be hard to handle. Plus, after every time you whip it out and place it back in your, uh, pants, well, it's not a very efficient way to handle a weapon of this magnitude, wouldn't you say? In all honesty, it's a bit awkward to hit your enemies in this game, but it's most definitely a playable game with a lot to explore and find. It's not quite Zelda, but it's enough like Zelda to make this list. Oh my god, do you know what game is next? Lord help us, but this one is known as Spiritual Warfare. This is one of those wisdom tree games your friends warned you about. The thing is, the game itself isn't half bad. It plays and even looks somewhat like The Legend of Zelda. Only instead of Link fighting Octoroks, you have a pear wielding kid throwing fruit at hardened criminals with knives coming at you. Or maybe they're demons, or maybe they're doves. Hell if I know, it's pretty confusing. And check out this dude playing basketball for some reason. Oh, great, and now I have to answer biblical trivia? Damn it, I missed one. Such shock disappointment on Mr. Bowtie's face here. Well, all jokes aside, you could do a lot worse if you're looking for a Zelda clone than playing this one. So the next one is called Zoda's Revenge, which is the 1994 sequel to Star Tropics. I know the name sounds like some weird off-brand Mountain Dew flavor, but what we actually have here is more of the same as the first one, only not quite. It's been upgraded, stronger, faster, smarter, the story takes place where the previous one left off, only this time the controls are much more free. No longer are you confined to the grid. No longer do you have your trusty yo-yo. This time you have to scavenge for rocks to begin with. But like any good action-adventure game of this type, as you go, you find new weapons and new power-ups to overcome obstacles and open up new challenges. It doesn't quite hold the same magic as the first one, but it's still a very solid game. Also. Believe it or not, this is our last game of the 90s. Who knew, right? This is The Legends of Aulia, released in 2016 by Gradual Games. Aulia is a fantastic newer game for play on the classic NES. I really have nothing but praise for it. You have a sword to stab your enemies, and you can also throw your owl at them, not only to inflict damage, but to also receive any bounty they leave behind. It's a really fun mechanic once you start to get the hang of it. This may be my number one pick on the whole list. It's really neck and neck with Star Tropics. There was a limited run of cartridges made of this game, and the ROM for emulation was given out freely a few years ago, after the contract to keep the game on Steam ran out. Definitely worth your time if you enjoy Zelda-like games. Last but not least is a game that isn't even out yet. It's called Angana. This one is from Bite the Chili Productions, who has been releasing test builds of his games to his Patreon supporters. Now I know this is just an early build, but it's really shaping up to be something quite fun and entertaining. I don't know if the final game will look or play anything like this, but from what they've put together thus far, it very much looks and feels like something that could have got the Nintendo's seal of approval back in the day. For those who don't know, this is actually a demake port of a game of the same name for the Game Boy Advance, which Bite the Chili Productions also released. I'll leave the link below for the site you can go find more info on this one. It's an NES game to watch for 2021, for sure. Well, that wraps up 10 Legend of Zelda-like games. Did I hit all the ones you thought of? Did I have any misses? Discuss it in the comments and you too can help other people find those games. If you found this video helpful, 
please hit the like button. Or if you didn't find it helpful, hit the dislike button. Until next time, see you soon.